Hello friend, welcome back to Ashley's Homestead Adventures. It is a glorious, cooler afternoon again today. Uh, I worked this morning. I'll pop um, some pictures in for you right here. Aren't those beautiful babies? Um, it's always a pleasure to have doodles in the salon and I, I so enjoy taking care of them. Uh, and now it's it's been an entire day. It started raining at about eight o'clock this morning and uh, it's rained. It is now five o'clock in the evening and we have like an hour break and it's supposed to start raining, raining again at six. Uh, so I thought I would come outside and just enjoy the farm. I love enjoying uh, my farm when it's saturated and has got like the kiss of rain on it. Everything's just so beautiful. It's cool. It's a nice break from the heat. Um, the bugs aren't like crazy busy, um, which is nice. Sorry, I just got... <laughs> I just... <laughs> Sometimes I wish that I had, a, I wish I had a camera that was like double-sided. I just watched the Chihuahua, she's way back in the, in the back five, you know, just run across the pasture. Um, so I got distracted, but before I get off the porch, I've got something exciting I want to show you guys and I keep forgetting, so I'm going to do it right now. So this is our lime trees and look at that. <laughs> We have two decent sized limes and this is a key lime. So they're not gonna get real big. They're just gonna be little, you know, like this. But we're part of the way there. Um, these plants drop a lot of their blossoms on us and uh, we have made it to this, this point, which is the first ones that we've made it that big. So I know that it's a small thing, but it's, exciting for me um i'm just looking at the other ones to see if i missed i maybe missed some oh yeah see there's another one right let's see if i can i try not to i try not to touch them right there and that's bigger than this plant has ever seen um so that's exciting we're doing something right finally with these guys um meanwhile you know we're setting blossoms again on this one i can see excuse me missy rescue how are you today huh are you good yeah um hey stop touching it so this one's setting blossoms again uh, this is a lemon, but we have yet to see anything off of it, and the grasshoppers are munching on it. Um, it keeps kicking. It keeps, you know, keeps keeps doing its thing. Um, it's amazing how resilient some of these plants are. Um, as you can see, everything's just kind of been kissed by the water, uh, by the rain, and it's nice and saturated. You can see some of our culprits there. I can't spray anything. I can't treat with anything because the rain's just going to wash it away. I've come to hate grasshoppers. Anywho, I'm headed out to finish the... Um, the morning chores that I did not get to this morning. Um, oh, look at that. It's a nice white scallop squash. I wonder if you guys will leave it alone long enough for me to harvest it. Um, let's see if I can catch some grasshoppers and kill them. 
Well, that one's dead. That one's dead. <clears throat> that one's dead. Well, there's three. Just killed three. Tomatoes. I should probably get some pictures. It's amazing how quickly the okra grows. Once it starts going, it really starts going. Goodness, when did that happen? I was just out here yesterday. Well, I guess I better get to harvesting. I'm having the squash vine borers. Holy cannoli! Well, there you go, you guys. You see that? Must have just had a hatch. a bunch of them in one place. I am going to go get some DE. Wow. Okay, I know I said I wasn't going to treat, but I just felt like that moment was a really great moment to seize the opportunity and they will not make it out of there alive. The DE will kill them. They're trapped and it will kill them. Um, so the way that DE works, especially for beetles, is DE, each granule of the powder is like glass and it actually, it cuts into them and kills them. Um, but this is a prime example of how they work, how squash bugs work. Um, and they're just, you know, there's, those are eggs right there. Um, and I've been behind on them since since June, um, since I went, I went on vacation. And I don't know that if, even if I hadn't taken a vacation, if I, I'm sure that I still would have been where I'm at, you know, behind. Um, it didn't help being gone. I think it just prolonged my harvest, you know, or it took away a little bit of my harvest. Um, but as you guys have seen, I'm not, it's not like I'm um, hurting for squash. I'm swimming in squash right now. Um, but this plant yesterday was completely fine. And you can see that it looked like, it just, it looks like death warmed over. Um, and they just come through and take out, you know, plant by plant. Um, and you know we've 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 had a good run but most of these plants you'll see like this right here this just fell off ouch i hit my head on that thing every stinking time it just it just fell off um and that's what they do they go in they're you know, squash vine borers, so they go in, they get into the vines of your squash, and they eat out the inside of it to where it doesn't have any structure anymore, and it just falls off, rots. Um, so, anywho, there's a little uh, squash bug 101, and truth be told, you guys, uh, I do treat about... I would say on average it's about every other day um, and I rotate my treatments so I go through neem I go through BT and I go through DE um, and you know they all treat different things neem is neem oil um, BT I think it's BT Monterey um, and uh, and then of course diet DE is diatomaceous earth um, but I'm not, 
I'm not freaking out about it. I have a natural garden. Uh, I know that bugs are here. I know that I have an ecosystem in my garden. Um, I am happy to have an ecosystem in my garden. There are good bugs and bad bugs. Um, so I'm not... It, it just, it is part of natural organic gardening. Um, it's part of having a garden and not spraying chemicals on it to kill everything. Um, you know, I have, I have some plants that I leave in the garden just for the bugs to eat them, to keep them away from the other bugs. Um, I mean, as you can see, I just passed three squash plants that are not healthy and seven squash plants that are extremely healthy. And I'm not ripping out the three that I see bugs on like right now. I'm not just like freaking out and ripping them out because the squash bugs are eating them right now. They're not bothering the other ones. And I'll go through and, and I'll rip them out as they die. And I'll take the squash bugs and their eggs to the chicken coop. But it's part of gardening. And if you, if you get upset and you get mad at yourself because, oh, why didn't I keep the bugs away from them? You guys, unless you're growing in a temperature controlled, airtight, and even then, uh, building, you're, you're not going to keep the bugs out of your garden. Um, so just understand that this, this is part of gardening and don't, don't be upset at yourself. Don't be mad. It's nature and learn from it. And, you know, I mean, I'm not going to lie. There are times when I get a little bit upset, you know, I mean, when the, when the grasshoppers come through and completely defoliate my dahlias right before they bloom, <laughs> makes me a little angry I'm not gonna lie uh, but it's part of it and so you know I start looking at plants that grasshoppers like and I start being more diligent about mowing my grass and keeping the grasshopper populations down um, so just a little a little tidbit of inspiration there for you guys who are also suffering with pest pressure. It's it's just part of it, and it's okay. Plant more squash. Um, you know, I have more time. I don't know if you have more time or not, um, but I I do. Uh, and if you don't have more time, then next year plant twice as many, or maybe plant. Um, you know, if you can, if you have if you have the space, maybe plant in two different areas and confuse the squash bugs um, or maybe look into plants that squash bugs really like um, but there are certain plants that um, I mean like for instance the grasshoppers love my dahlias so for the most part they left my corn alone until they stripped the dahlias pretty much bone dry and then they went to the corn but they left my corn alone long enough for me to harvest it so you know I mean just do what you can do what you can. Okay, I'm going to I'm checking on all my new plants, um, admiring everything that's been kissed by the rain, and I'm gonna go out and feed chickens. Find yourself on the wrong side of the fence, did we? Hmm. That uh, means you must need yourself a little bit of a, a wing trim. Yeah. Little lady. If I can catch her without. Nope. I really hate chasing them around in the long grass, especially right after it's rained. But such is life. Oh, it really upsets Bart when I get one of his ladies. All right. she is does not look like she is a trim culprit so now I just need to get me a pair of scissors which I thought I had some on my floor earlier so and for those of you who don't know hanging a chicken upside down is actually quite hypnotic it's a lot less dangerous than 
trying to hold them upright. It's not painful to them at all. Um, and it just kind of makes them go to sleep. But we will get this girl's wings trimmed here and get her back in her pen. This is also not painful at all your chickens. You're just cutting the feather. You're not actually cutting any skin or bone or, you know, anything. You're just cu cutting the feather of the wing. That's the other wing. And I only cut one. She's pretty mad at me right now, but that's what happens when you get out. Getting your wings trimmed and having a little bit of a fashion snafu in your month is a whole heck of a lot better than getting caught out here after dark by Mr. Raccoon. Hmm? Or Mr. Coyote. Yeah. So. Right, let's get you back in. There you go. Happy chickens now. Hi kids. I want you guys to watch these guys and how quickly they have learned what to do as pasture chickens. You can see that they're all huddled up here at the front of the cage. And that is excitement because they know that this is, this is the part of the cage that moves forward. So just watch them, it's really cool. Engaged. I gotta get in there and fix it. Okay, all is right in the world again. They've got their, their food. And their water's right again. That happens sometimes if there's a chicken standing on it when you move it. Um, it will pop that bottom tray off that big water. That's okay. It's my marker. I leave a, a marker. It used to be one of those really cool LED lights. Well, that thing just broke after taking it in and out of the ground, you know, every day for a month. So now I just use a feed pan. Um, and it just starts at the front. And then I know that if I drag the tractor until the back wheel is, even with that pan that I've drug it, one length's worth. And it's pretty amazing to see what, what they do, you know, for a pasture and how quickly it recovers. So let's see. This is yesterday. So this is the day before, two days ago, three days ago, four days ago. Five days ago, six days ago, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, 
12, 13, 14. In 14 days and two weeks, you almost can't tell that they've even been here. It's pretty cool. Yeah, in 14 days, this grass here, which is the grass that we're encouraging to grow. Hello, Hazy, you are all wet. Go on, please. Go. Go. He looks at me like I'm not serious. Go! Thank you. Go. Thank you. Gracious. Like you're, you're kidding right now. I want to be on camera. So this grass right here, which is the grass that we're encouraging to grow. No, sir. <laughs> Go. Oh, she thinks I'm an intruder. <laughs> Go on. So as I was saying before, I was so rudely interrupted by a bunch of dogs. Okay, basically, I'm not going to get down. Basically, that grass looks the same as that grass. I'm going to pare it down here for you. That grass looks the same as that grass. And that's the grass. This grass is the grass was in with the chickens. Anyway, it was a long way of getting there, but you know, I have Labradors. The other thing that I'm very conscious of, because this is a hay field, is I'm very conscious of where I'm walking and where I'm driving. So I drove in on that side that we were just on for the longest time because that was the best way to get to the tractor. Well, now it's better for me to pull, drive straight in and back up pulling the tractor with my four wheeler. So that way all I'm doing, except for the days that they need water, the days that they need water, then I have to pull around. But on the days that they don't need water, I can just drive straight in from the driveway to here, pull the tractor and then back out and then I'm only treading on that grass I'm not treading on the whole pasture of grass it just it leaves my footprint smaller um, in the hayfield which is important to us trying to get a good angle on the on her web, and there you go. You can see how big and beautiful her web is. She says, I don't feel threatened by you. You don't scare me, you piddly little human. <laughs> She's beautiful. Okay. I'll make your dinner. I've been really lazy. I haven't cleaned up the wool from Reese's. I did Reese's last. Okay. I'll make your dinner. <sighs> Let the silence rain. Oh, never mind. Well, these guys are quiet anyway.
and it's raining again so it doesn't look like I'm gonna get any any other work done out here this evening which is completely okay it's you know almost a seven o'clock so I only really had another hour to work anyway but thank you guys for coming along with me for the short time that that I had with you today I do appreciate every time that you log into my channel and watch what's going on on the farm I will catch you guys on the next one yours truly <laughs>